Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about making some eight biddles worth glitchiness in After Effects. So if you caught my Twitch stream the other day, you saw I started trying to make this eight bit grid thing that was initially gonna be a visualizer, but it kind of evolved into something else. But let's start there. All of this stuff I'm gonna demo is gonna be in the project file. So if you want any specific settings or anything like that, go grab that. For the most part, everything in here is seasoned to taste. So like a good chef seasons his food and he has to taste it every time, just make sure to lick your monitor from time to time, then you'll be all good. That's how the pros work. So the basic idea with this setup is that we have some sort of layer on the bottom, generally with a mosaic applied. I'm keeping this grid to like 10 by 10. My comp is 1920 by 1080. So my mosaic settings are 192 by 108. So if I unsolo this, you can see I have one grid set to 10 by 10. The anchor is at zero, zero, and it's sizing from the height and width sliders. And then I have another grid on top because you can't put them in the same layer because one cancels out the other. I think that's because grid probably just fills the whole comp size with a color and then makes a grid on top of that. So I have the second one here and they're both set to silhouette alpha. And this one's set to five by five. The border on the smaller one is one and the border on the bigger one is five. So that gives us this like pixel look with like sub pixels. If we zoom up in here, you can kind of see how that works. And then on top of that, we have a glow setup and this is similar in every comp, but the settings are slightly different depending on what I'm going for. You're gonna have to tweak that for your personal preference and because different colors will react differently with this. This is kind of based off the way Andrew Kramer did it in his glitch tutorial not too long ago. So first we have a set mat that's grabbing the saturation. And then we have a solid composite and we're compositing black back into it. Then we have a Gaussian blur to blur at four pixels. And then we're doing a box blur that's horizontal only. It's 194 across in this case. And then we just duplicated that. Then we have a glow. The threshold is set to zero, so everything should glow. The radius is 108, so we kind of have a kind of high radius. And then we have a low intensity of 0.25. Everything else is set as it is. We just have another glow that's basically a duplicate of the other one with a little bit higher threshold and a little bit lower radius. And the intensity is 0.2 in this one. You can do a third one if you want it to be brighter or whatever you want to do. But I kept it down to two because glows and stuff end up making it take longer to render. And then over top of this, I have a layer called color. And this is basically just a gradient that goes on top of this thing. It goes vertically and it's just green with orange on the edges. Some of the later ones I have yellow in between here so I get a different transition. And then we're just using this preserve underlying transparency switch. So we're only putting that gradient on top of what we have under it. So which is just this audio spectrum layer, which has a mosaic applied to it. If you want to see this grid in between, I have this background layer that you can turn on. And it's basically just a light gray layer that's adding back into this stuff. So it adds over top of our color layer and adding it like that basically just fills in all the area in here where there's actually just an alpha channel. Also, since we're using it later on in here, I also decided to try CC Collider on this just to see what it would look like. And it looks cool, but it takes a little bit to render, so we'll jump right back in a minute. If you have epilepsy, I urge you to turn away, and you probably also want to find a different career path because all we do is make blinky things here. So that's kind of neat. So let's look at the base audio layer that I have in here. These are pre-comped in each one of these visualizer comps. And it's basically just one audio track, and then all of these are audio visualizer layers. This one that's called left only goes to the middle, so it's this left portion, and then right is basically a repeat of that on the other side. Then we have this one that's total, and that's the whole entire range of audio, and it goes to the right, and then we have total reverse. That's the whole range going to the left. The right and left channel are actually a little bit of a sub-range of the audio. As you can see, normally by default, this goes from 200 to, I think, 20,000 you can modify this to get a different look. So if I go to a place in here where there's more music, if I want this to be different, I can go this way to get more bumps in it. It depends on what kind of track you have. And then I have this total three layer, which actually we're gonna call it total streak. And basically this is just a duplicate of the total reverse layer. And on top of that, we have an additional mosaic and the vertical blocks on this one is just set to one. So we just get straight up vertical lines. So outside and all these other visualizer comps, there's another mosaic applied to that to make sure that it fits within the same grid so it's 192, 108. When I was originally making this, every layer had a mosaic on it, to which I tried to simplify that by putting an adjustment layer on in the pre-comp, and I actually found out that somehow it's actually faster to just apply it straight to your pre-comp in your main comp. However, if you're gonna use this audio spectrum layer a bunch of times in the same comp for some reason, you're probably better off putting mosaic in there on an adjustment layer, because that should reduce the amount of processing that After Effects has to do. 
So this one's basically the same thing as Visualizer 1, except for we have this additional adjustment layer in between, and that just has a box blur that goes vertical only. So you can adjust just how much blur you have on here. I also have a levels on here to bring the highlights up a little bit, because otherwise the blur just kind of dims this all down. So then in 03, I kind of wanted to thicken this part up, so I just have an adjustment layer with a transform on it. I have uniform scale unchecked, and we just scaled the height twice. You can go taller if you want to, or whatever. All right, so then I wanted to change it up, but I kept the visualizer in here. But I went back and added these little blocks, and those are like the digital grain from tutorial 120, one comp to rule them all, which is linked down below. So then I got off the whole visualizer track, and I decided to start playing around with some of these glitch transitions I had built for this glitch pack that's coming out at some point, eventually, maybe. So putting that on the bottom of this thing, we get this. There's some like noisy bits in there. It's got CC Collide on it, so it kind of makes this cool grid thing. It's kind of like some weird, like, alternate reality 1980s 8-bit TV messed up thing. So basically, this is the same setup. It's just the bottom layer is completely different. We still have those digital grain boxes that I put on top. The only side note I would say about those boxes, too, now that I'm thinking about it, is that you need to make them as, like, cubes. Depending on how you set up their expressions, but it's easier to just do cubes. So I'm going to show you what the bottom layers of these things look like, and then we'll build one at the end of the tutorial. And the mats all look kind of like this. They're a transition with another transition luma matted on top, and they're all just using CC Kaleida set to flower. So that's what that one looks like. This next one looks like this. This one's a little slower because this one's not using pre-rendered elements, and the other one is. The other one has a thing just from the pack, which actually is also included in the project files. But that's kind of what this one looks like. So that's what that one looks like. The transitions and the mats in these last two are actually built in here, so they're in this project file. The transition looks like this, and the mat looks like this. The mats are mostly made with JS Placement. That's a pay-what-you-want program, and I'll link that down below. It's pretty awesome, so you should grab it. And then we just have some noise on top of this because this is used for a lot of displacement, so that kind of like shifts things around kind of erratically. So those last two make a dot fields that look like this one and this one. I like that one a lot, actually. All right, so let's build one more of these things. So we go comp, new comp. I'm going to call this one mat02. And before I forget, I'm going to name this one mat01. Just to stay stacked up correctly. All right, so in here, I'm going to grab a JS classic layer, I guess we'll use. Throw one of these in there. Scale that down. For these sorts of things, I usually try to throw one of these in the back. I'm going to put another one on top. I'm going to rotate this one, let's say, negative 90. Scale it down. And I'll set this one to, like, overlay. So we kind of get, like, this whole jumble thing. I'm going to throw a new adjustment layer on top of this thing. We're going to add some noise to that. Not fractal noise. Different kind of noise. Crank this up a good bit. We're going to turn off color noise. Even that looks neat, just kind of on its own. And then I have this like X bit grid thing that I made, but I'm going to scale this thing down 50% this time. And then I'm going to add a motion tile and set output width to 200 height to 200. And then I'll cover that whole thing in those X's just to give it a little bit more texture. Then I'll usually just animate this thing. I'll put a hold keyframe. I'll move it down kind of erratically and I tend to move them up. Actually, this one we can just move around like that. Let's go page down a couple of times. Move it up. Kind of shift it from side to side as I go along usually. And if I do it a longer section in between, I try to move it accordingly. So we're actually passing where we are in here, but that should be okay because it should be pretty random. So you can see kind of like shifts around, but we still have that noise to move us around. All right, so then we're going to make a new transition and a new comp. Let's call this thing Transition 02. So I'm going to move this thing out into my pre-comps over here. Actually put these into a new folder as well. Call that transitions. Then I'm going to drag this mat, not 01. I'm going to drag this mat 02 into mats and put this mat 02 down here. I usually just turn this thing off, but I actually think this time I'm actually going to use a image wipe with it. I increase the completion. Move that down to zero. See how that looks. That's pretty good. Let's make it a little longer. Let's open that up, drag that over. That's cool. So over top of that, I'm going to grab the marquee tool up here. I'm going to drag out 
a box. Let me move this one over here on this side. I'm going to change this fill back to something normal. I'm going to set it to white. All right, so then I'm going to take this rectangle. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to uncheck this constrained proportions deal. Set a keyframe, move that down a little bit. I'm going to set this to zero in height. So I kind of want them all to build upward. On this one, I'm actually going to change the position as well. I haven't done this on some of them, but I'm going to do it on this one. I'm going to move this down a good bit so that kind of grows and moves up. Let me move it down a little bit more. There we go. Let me move it up a little bit more as well. So it kind of like pushes up. And then I'm just going to make pretty much another one of these. It covers most of the width of our comp here. I'm going to keep it thin. I'm going to do the same kind of animation to that. So we're going to turn this off. I'm going to move this down a little bit further. Move this down over here. Let's offset these in time a little bit. I'm going to move this back down over there. Move this layer down so that it moves up. We'll put some easing on that. Just use this one. It's fine. So now they kind of move in. And I'm actually going to set those closer to each other. It's a little slow. Let's bring them back closer. Let me zoom in a little bit because I don't normally work with this as far out as I was there. There we go. Then we're going to click on contents up here and add a repeater just to make sure that we don't end up with it in our rectangle. Just going to add a couple of copies. I'm going to just space them out vertically instead of horizontally. Just move to where they're kind of already up here. Just add more space and more copies. Well, actually, that's probably that's probably enough copies. Then I'm going to add a wiggle transform and make sure that's under the repeater so I can use all these things, kind of like a cloner in cinema. I change the random seed, and then I'm going to move their position around. And I'm also going to hit scale and let them scale negatively. Move this position even more. Just so that we can like hopefully fill this thing up. This isn't going enough to the top, so I'm gonna move this layer, this first rectangle that we did, up. I'm just gonna select both of these keys, move this thing up here. So you kind of like just keep playing around with this, and the goal is basically to fill this in as much as possible. And some of the other ones I actually increased the size of this other rectangle a little bit too, so I'm gonna do that here. Not as big as the other one, but that'll work. Let me move it up a little bit as well. So now they'll kind of just do that. Let me change the wiggles per second as well down instead of two. Let's go to like 0.5 because that's going a little too crazy. There we go. So that bounces back and I don't really like that, but that's not going to matter because we're going to try to get this thing filled in right about here. So let's scroll up. Let's click on this thing. Call this thing boxes so that we know what it is later on. Close this guy up. And then to that, I'm going to add some displacement. And we're going to pick that matte layer. Let's add a little bit of horizontal displacement so we kind of like rough up these edges and it kind of blends things in a little bit. And then we're going to add a vertical displacement, but I don't want to get like an angle or anything. Let's set that back to five just so that we don't have a straight edge, but looks okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so on top of this, I'm going to add another one of those X-bit grids, but I'm going to try rotating it. It's where maybe we get like pluses instead. Let me add a motion tile as well. Let's go 200 on that, like 120. Don't want to go too big. You only want to use what you need. You can go up. It'll jump by 10, and there we go. So I guess on that one, we're going to do 200. There we go. Now we have pluses instead. All right, I'm going to add to this a displacement as well. We're going to pick our mat. I'm going to add that before it. It's probably going to get some weirdness in here, but that's okay. That might actually look kind of neat. So let's leave that on here. I'm going to try a CC image wipe on that thing as well. I'm going to pick a gradient or mat at the bottom. Let's bring this in. This is just kind of messing with it and seeing kind of what you can build out of it. That looks kind of neat. I like that. So now we'll end up with it like that. And we're going to want this whole thing to go white at the end of it. So I'm actually going to keyframe this completion back down as we get closer to filling this up. I'm probably going to slide this over. It should go up 100%. All right, there we go. Oh, added both. Don't have them both selected when you do that. It definitely helps. Set that back to 100. There we go. All right, so that grows in there. That's cool. Maybe let's bring this back down just a little bit. Let's not have that playing. 
There we go. Then I'm going to add this text generator into here. I built this for a glitch text tutorial that we did like a long time ago. I'm going to set this thing to use threshold. So I have these like black lines and stuff. Again, this is all kind of experimental. I haven't really done it like this before. I'm just kind of messing around as much as possible and trying to make something different than the ones that I have before. So we move this down a little bit. I generally scale these out so that I can fit them in here. So let's uncheck that constraint, bring this down. Put this like over here. That should fill out to white. Yeah. So we'll leave that in there. It's kind of like a cool little like scan liney kind of deal. Let's duplicate this and we'll bring another copy of that up here because I know that that's going to need to be filled in. And then right here looks kind of like a prime spot for us to throw a white shape over top of everything. Let's make that just solid. Let's call this white. Let's see what that looks like. That should be pretty cool. All right, so let's take this transition and this mat and basically duplicate this BG mat comp. Let's make a fourth one. Double click that guy. I'm just gonna replace both of these with this transition that we just built. Just kind of see what it looks like just as is using the same timing as the other one had. That's kind of neat. That should look pretty cool. All right, um, let's bring this back down. I think this can go a little longer. Let's see kind of what we do here. Yeah, I like seeing those squares first. A uh, little less time, a little less. There we go. I like seeing those squares kind of complete again. Okay, and then we're going to duplicate this dot field comp. We're going to make it dot field 05. Double click that. And then just swap this BG mat with BG mat 4. I'll leave these grain boxes set the same way. Render it and we'll come back. So there we go. It came out pretty neat. I think this glow is a little intense. I'm going to bring it back down just a little bit. You can just take the transparency down. These are just added over top. So let's get it to where we can actually see something. That looks pretty good. Let's render that guy again, and there we go. Probably take that glow layer off after everything goes away. Probably render a little faster. All right, so that's it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>